It actually takes three. Yeah. Like it's really, really wow. just shows how what much how strong of a player he is when teams have to respect man his, his champions. I expect somewhat of a dive comp coming here from Counter Logic, even though they haven't been too aggressive. They take out Nijaki's Morgana. And that means they want to get past that front line. Oriana still in the mix. They have banned out Jace as well. So we won't see any of that play. St. Vicious liking the Mundo play as well as uh, a Mumu play last game. So we'll have to see him on that. And they hover on to Nunu for the next one. They lock it in. Yep. Uh, the Nunu pick, I, I'm surprised they picked one though here. I, I, it worked for them one game and they probably were like, oh, well, it worked for us for a lot of games. Mundo's a really specific champion. Like picking him early, unless you have a very uh, specific team comp, it's going to come to bite you again later. I think they're going for a new new cog lane and they're gonna try to emulate the success they had earlier with with Mundo, but they I would say they only had that success because the other team messed up. It wasn't necessarily a strong team comp from the get-go. I don't think they specifically played it too well, they being Curse. Uh, right. we, we look at CLGU, they have the Ezreal. I would like to see a Sona, a, especially against Nunu. A Sona versus Nunu, Ezreal Sona versus Nunu would be really, really good. Yep. So, so we actually see, haven't uh, seen too much Sona this tournament. Really been a little, so much Zyra coming out. It's such a formidable Zyra pick. Zyra just gives you a lot of control. Uh, but especially gets, if they know Nunu is support and bottom, right. uh, Sona actually beats Nunu support lane. Yep, they're going look. They're going back to a Nunu Kog'Maw lane. It's, it looked effective for them before, but like I said, I have my suspicion that that was just a little bit of a lucky break for Curse. We don't have really the dive comp. I think they look might it. look for an Orianna here because Orianna is just something that, yep, yep. Jackie plays a lot. You see just the so Orianna it. and the Kog'Maw lock-in. So very, very similar comp to what we saw last last round against Reddit Nation, now what, now Quantic Gaming. I feel like... I don't know, I feel like they're going to go for the Deathfire Grass, Wicked, and Mumu. Uh, the Malphite of Mumu. Wicked's gonna be able to jump past this. That Morgana ban really allows them to get past the front line with Malphite to start it off. These last two picks of Counter Logic are really gonna reveal what they were trying to come out with. They did a great job of holding this back. Right. Uh, you, you can go for Norelia top. Like, Malphite doesn't have to go top. That's true. I'm curious to see what they're gonna go ahead and do. I don't think they'll, they'll keep Malphite top. I think they really wanna play a Bruiser. So they're gonna go ahead and play. Morgana's banned. Maybe an Ari pick from Frog in here. I would like to see that because I know his, his Ari is really, really strong. And you need something to dive if you're going to be playing Malphite. Because you need people to dive with Malphite into the back line. So maybe like a, uh, an Aurelia Ari would be really nice here. I think that would work perfectly in this team comp. He does have quite a champion pool. Most of it banned out. We did see him actually playing Morgana. He played a really great match. We've seen him on Lux, which... Kind of synergizes with this team. The Gragas would not. Lux would actually be really good here too because he, she's one of the few champions that can get to the back line. Yeah. Because her, her ulti and her her Q and her E both have over a thousand range. And that's that's just the advantage here. You can see that CLG brings to this lineup with Frog and himself having such a large champion pool. They've wasted so many bands on him and he still has champions. Really Lux. And he can pull out. And yes, he does. He's still hovering on it. And the selection will be made. It's going to be that frog on Lux once again. Really fantastic call there, Rib. I almost forgot about Lux, but yeah, especially when they're playing against Kogma Cops, they really like to use Lux. Because Lux Cops are all about keep away, but with with you can't keep away Lux's uh, cast range from Lux, Lux's cast range. It's just way too right. long. So yeah, they're looking for a top lane? Mm. Not seen. Actually, on hit Lulu does really well against... I remember a when, when Lulu top. first came out, it was pretty much Garth and Bob playing like Madrid's recurve bow or what's that Lulu all day long. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. It's definitely not bad. Like, people underestimate. There's no way they're going to like that. <laughs> if, if, Good cheers from the crowd. They're just building everybody. If they like that, I'll, I'll eat my hat. No, please, please. No, no, no. no. They, 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 lock it. Lock they will it. Hear Can you me hear me? They, they'll, lock they'll it lock in. Lock that in. <laughs> All right, we'll see what they do. They're just kind of holding this one out. They know what they want to pick. Oh my gosh, they lock it in. Boy, boy, on Nasus. If they switch it, unless they have some cockamamie composition, they want to come I, out with this, where they're like, Nasus support, which is exhaust all day for your support. But that's weird. It just smells funny. I feel really bad now because I really like this hat, and it's not even mine. <laughs> we get some salt and pepper over here for the start? 
maybe some catch up. But no, no. Um, I'll, I'll save this for for after the games. But we'll see if Nasus works out well in the Steam Cop. I maybe they're looking to one v two him because straight up, I feel like Aurelia, especially with that true damage and that on hit reset, really is a bad like a really bad matchup for Nasus. I'm still confused. It's, we'll have to see what they it's, do with it's this. It's something that I've seen a lot in like solo queue, but it's being a able to transfer super, solo queue super into... Super duper protect cop peel team. Yep, absolutely. But you can't protect cop against the Rage of Lux, so I'm really curious why they chose that, chose that champion, because yeah. it doesn't stop Lux from being any more effective. That's true. That's Yeah, they have a lot of poke towards that back line. They still have the, the alt to come in. They just got a no swap in there, so they're just going to get back in and get that switched up. But we will have a Nasus coming in here for game one. If you're just joining us for the Lone Star Clash 2, Austin, Texas, Rivington the third here with Skara, our final series of the day. A best of five curse flying their way for the upper bracket. Have one game in their favor, so we could see a full four matches. Pretty great teams here coming from Counterlogic Europe and Curse. What, what Riv means is that CLG was in the upper bracket, so they had the one game advantage. Curse is coming sad, in, didn't I? I think you switched around and Curse is coming in from the lower bracket with a one game deficit. So they need to win three games. All right. And CLG, you only need to win two. So they are finally all locked in once again. Boy Boy will be taking that Nasus. And he goes very a very defensive Nasus. Yeah, exhaust or uh, ghost, ghost to, to catch up and make it happen. But you have exhaust on top of wither, which is pretty much exhaust. Yeah. So you're going to be able, like I said, a huge peel team for Cop. They are trying to keep him so safe. And you have Oriana, so you already have the play safe uh, composition. I don't see how this Cop will be effective. I'll be honest. I. It's very reliant on the it, one it, thing. It's literally, if Froggen gets any sort of farm in this game, he will completely crush this team. Probably. But I guess how is that? How is the the Oriana Lux matchup? Uh, skill matchup. Skill matchup. Straight straight down the middle. It's a skill matchup. It depends on how well Froggen plays it. And I know Froggen. He's an excellent player. He's played some of the best I've seen him play at this event. So, and his teammates were actually surprised about it too. Like they're like, "Wow, Froggen played really well that game." So if we're if someone's gonna be able to play Lux well, it's gonna be Froggen at this event. You know, somebody poked me and said uh, a few matches before they were casting. Uh, good buddy Gus, he said that Lux actually was brought out against Team Dynamic in the SL matchups, and he still went like 10-0 and zero on him. So he is just that champion for him. is a very feel-good champion, and he really doesn't take himself out of the comfort zone whatsoever. Right, no, I feel like Froggen just has such high mechanical skill. It really doesn't take many games to be comfortable with any champion, just as long as he, he's able to conceptualize like how the champion does damage and how the champion is supposed to position. So with Saint in this last game, had really that that fight up top from Boy Boy. Boy Boy is not going to be really anybody to, to come up with huge ganks in the beginning, so he may not see the focus they had top lane. We'll have to see if he can get that early oracles again, if he can get himself and help his team get first blood. They've been doing very good at controlling the early game, but Counter Logic Europe, also with their defensive strategies, may be able to kind of push that off to the side and do their own thing in the beginning here. Right. I'll be really surprised to see what they do with Boy. Uh, he decides to go teleport. I'm ho I'm hoping they one v two him. Oh, he did switch because that All might right. be that might be the ideal the ideal thing to do. They one v two Nasus. But even then, I don't know if it really will lose the one v two to Nasus. So it's I, I really want to see how this match plays out. Like I would be very very surprised if Curse pulls off. They have that somewhat not somewhat but they have that late game team. Nobody in this composition really wants to do anything that early. They want to. They want to be able to get into the fight uh, once they get their ultimates. Once Nasus has that Q farmed up, they do look to be switching this a little bit as well. We see uh, Cop going top. Uh, in terms of items, very, very similar. Actually, Krepo picking up a mana potion, maybe looking to harass a lot. Maybe not thinking that the bottom lane can trade harass, which is correct. The new new Cog really lacks the ability to trade harass with an early Ezreal Zone, at least for the first couple of levels. Push in top to get that ward on the Wraiths. They're going to make their way out so they get a little bit of jungle vision throughout that first early portion of the laning phase. Moving back towards mid, kind of revealing themselves. I think they yeah, obviously they're saw They're definitely Curse looking well. to 1v2. As soon as you see Cops positioning from the spectator point of view, yeah. he's already at the top part of the map looking to do double golems, which is smart, 
but unfortunately him being all the way there means they lose 100% control of the uh, blue buff. Yeah, they have uh, gone all the way for it. They had the ward in, the ward caught everybody moving towards the top, and they said we have control, but now with that movement towards top, they have to reconsider if their blue buff is being taken, and you can see them kind of just backing out of the situation, pings it going down everywhere, so and <laughs> a big walk for both teams and really just turns into a That's reset. That's a really, really, really weird ward placed by Curse. I've never seen a dragon ward placed in that <laughs> position. Just It would be the same as, as warding Baron up top. It's just not something I see much. It's not something that I feel like is very effective either, because most many te most teams don't do that. Because the vision it gives doesn't really help any lane, but like only really helps off the invade. I guess it. You know, right now it's telling them that it's going to be the two v one, and it looks like they're going to be able to thwart that and put the game back to the normal. Not so much meta, but normal laning partners. So not surprising at all. Wicked calls the one. Uh, CLG, you calls the one v two. They know it's yeah. coming. And Wicked was like, just let me 1v1 them. Because I bet he's thinking, like, I can crush this guy. Because that, that Wicked is very, very confident in Aurelia. I'd be very surprised if he loses a matchup which has an on hit, which has, like, Aurelia's kit. Boyboy does have a little bit of armor to start off this matchup just because of Nasus. But Wicked, like you said, can just bite down through that. It's going to be a tough one for him. But they seem to just be freezing the lane here for Farm Fest. That's what it could be between these two lanes. No. Prime aggression off the beginning here. We saw a cop coming to lane last time as well. Snoopy looking to invade for this blue buff, but I think Saint knows. He's gonna look to cut. And oh, they see that's exhaust each other. and red buff versus Snoopy. He's gonna back right out. Right. Actually, he's waiting on this one, kind of pushing back in. Looks to get another shard down. Ooh. Only a little bit of damage, but really, this is great because he's just keeping Saint from his jungle, stopping him. Snoopy now has the chance to do a little bit of counter, and here comes Wicked. Beautiful play there. Snoopy going in for the aggression, and Saint is forced to concede that blue buff. Yeah, no. Uh, CLG, you definitely played that this very, very well. They have the advantage top lane. They have the advantage bot lane. Yep. They have the advantage in the jungle with better warding. And they have almost complete control of the map right now, except for in the top red jungle, purple side jungle. It's going to hurt Saint a little bit. He's happy that he does not use mana, but it looks like he's going to try to get through this one. Still going for the golems, using his smite to get that down. He has the chance to push top, but he looks to be too low. And he's really just forced into bad positions for that, that last minute due to that push from Snoopy. A huge advancement in the jungle there for them. like he will try to uh, continue. Last time he went, I don't think he even built the Heart of Gold. He just start, went straight for that uh, War Mogs as well after getting all the, the recipe items. So we'll have to see what Saint goes for. This build on Mundo, last time he was pure tank. The War Mogs into Thornmail, I think, was his second mm -hmm. item. Just continuing his boots for defense as well. And CLG EU just preps this top to be pushed in. Cop and Elements taking free damage constantly from the poke of Sona. That's the great thing about having her in your lane. You're always going to be landing those power cords on either the support or the AD carry. So there's Ooh. always harassment. Window looking to gank bottom. This is definitely something they need to succeed. Wicked's overstaying, but I don't really think they can kill Wicked. Like, Wicked has the sixth sense. Like, he knows something might happen here. So he instead, instead of staying, he goes to back out. Or is he going to stay for a little bit more harass? And he, he comes in. I don't even know if this gank will work. Saints Red just fell off. Oh, there's the Blade Surge. He puts himself into the fight. Could he get the, the Equilibrium onto Saint? Will be the stun, but I think there's just too much crowd control. The Flash is up. Can he dodge the next Cleaver? The, or the uh, Wither cannot go. They're under the turret. He gets the Equilibrium strike on. Blade Surge in. Will it be enough to take down Saint Vicious? He looks to live from the tick. And first blood going to Boy Boy on Nasus. Oh, very impressive play. I was very surprised that Saint lived there. But uh, the dive worked out for them, and now really is in a really, really bad position, being behind uh, almost a whole wave there. Snoopy having to go down to cover it, so it's not a complete loss. Snoopy can cover uh, and get to level 6 a lot faster. Elements trying to, like, call out the bait here. Goes to draw the power cord from Krepo. Actually gets that to go out, and Krepo has a uh, throw down to a minion. Yep, no, this lane Curse, is in the, or Curse Cop and Elements in the bad position. They know that the wave is shoving uh, against them, pushing the other direction. So what they do is they just go and take golems. However, I think, I don't know if that's a good idea. They go and take golems before the wave completely pushes past middle, which means they're, they're going to lose. Force DS yes, come back to lane, still not going to be able to do anything. If anything, they, should, they probably need to call someone to come or wait for Yellow P to go back here. That so, lane's just going to sit in mid as well. Oh, wow. The fact that, that uh, Nunu's 
keep going there with only by himself or cops there right. only by himself and they're not playing aggressive on them is really 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 strange and they have vision of same vicious in yeah mid, they have they have vision that they're trying the vision vision in mid if they literally just all in him here with Krepo, they would, could have done. They could have at least forced a summoner, Crepo if not kill. Acting as a human ward, a huge opportunity missed from Connor Logic Europe, and they just show how defensive they are in the early part of the game. Slow and steady for them, just like uh, just like Curse. We'll see who it really comes out on top for here. Curse again, getting an upper hand in the early part of the game as they have been, so they're keeping that consistent. Seven minutes into this one, they hold a a small 500 gold lead. Oh yeah, so Curse, so. Like I said, Saint just needs to come in here, quickly push out the wave so the wave equalizes and he, he just leaves after he does that. Cops definitely going to be behind probably about 20 CS after this this uh, wave clears up at the tower. Uh, not in a good position to be, and I knew this lane would win off off just the matchup is pretty bad. Bottom lane, Wicked, you can see just how much that first gank hurt. It is 43 to that CS of 36 for them. So not too bad because Wicked has a, a huge wave pushing up on him. Mm -hmm. Wicked can can recover in this lane in about like by the time he hits six. It's not it's not a huge loss for him. He decides to go Merc treads though against this strong of a wither. That's fairly surprising. Boy, boy, just crushing down onto Wicked right now. He really can't do much in lane. He's trying to keep his CS up, but he's just forced to chug down potions. And like you said, that choice of boots really isn't effective for him, or may not be. Uh, it synergizes well with his Ionic Spark Wits End build, but he hasn't gotten those items yet, so it's like it's kind of not doing too much for him. Going down his ultimate, going for the strong push. The Wither is down to really just cut out the damage. Sona is back up top, and even Curse isn't taking the advantage of knowing this. Element should be in his face, blasting him every time he gets the opportunity. Oh, there he goes. He heard me. And they're just continuously, uh, continuously putting down the harass, denying a bit of experience. There's a true shot for Rastri. Doesn't miss too much. That gank down bottom. Boy, boy, taking a lot of damage here. Do they have what it takes? And the ultimate okay. keeping him alive. Nasus, oh, almost a Lux laser. Nasus showing how formidable he can be in this lane with the right help from his jungler. Yep. Uh, Lux just went for a random ulti. Hope, yeah. Hoping he can get it. Wasn't was a big loss for him. He just he's are he's still equal in CS. But tried to make a play and it didn't work out. 74 to 73, like you said, equal in that mid. Oh wow, Jack! Oh, <laughs> Jack the blue steals raid. big raid. A little bit of uh, beautiful harass there. A dissonance will keep him safe, and he knows that mana uh, mana fight is not in his favor, so he backs off from that. More than happy to just kind of uh, get that one over on Froggen. Yep, and you see uh, Nasus' items, Nasus' items. He's just dying to just rush Glacial. He needs the early CDR to help build up his Q, and it's a very strong item against Aurelia as well as. Uh, there, are, uh, as well as Ezreal. So if he just rushes the Frozen Heart, he has a huge AD steroid from his ulti, and he has a huge debuff from his W. So it, that's that's going to be his team five presence. I'm just a little bit worried because I, I hope uh, I hope that uh, he can live through the ganks. Like he's been doing a, a really good job surviving this entire time and actually winning the lane off the off the first gank. So it looks like a lot of what what uh, that. Nasus has issues with in lane, uh, are a little bit uh, absolved if you get a lot of jungle pressure, which right. is what Saint has been doing all game. Yeah, I was just going to say, when you finished up, big props to Saint. Counter jungled on his blue early, was able to come out, as we said in the beginning, the first kill for himself with uh, with Amumu last game got him that Oracles, the assist and the his, uh, his jungle farm got him that Oracles and the Heart of Gold this time. So he's just really escalating his play each game, and Mundo's really working out for him in these teams. Top elements still pushing back onto Yellow Pete and Crepo. The CS there, 76 to 69. So the lane just pretty back and forth. But Yellow Pete going for pure damage off the bat with the sustain from Zona to keep him in that lane as much as possible. So they're going to be looking really to get that burst from Ezreal quite early. Uh, the middle lane just split even CS. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, in terms of jungling, Saint picking him such always picking up such an early oracle is to play Minesweeper on the on the side where he's doing an excellent job putting pressure on the map even while not being there, which is something that you'll see a lot in competitive play on whenever a jungler gets ahead. And we see the ping of reward going down. Now Snoopy knows he doesn't have to waste time going down bottom. These teams always communicating, figuring out what the next best move is. 
We can see. Are they giving blue buff the void? Yeah. That's that's uh and the glacial shroud he's going back to buy. <laughs> Uh, okay. That's, that's strange. I did not expect that. They but they had to have talked it out between Nijack E. I mean, he's not having too bad of a middle. He's got right. his, he's got the chalice. He should be all right for now. I can't help but think that Jackie really wanted it. And boy, was like, no, <laughs> please, please give me it. And Jackie was like, okay, whatever. It's like, dude, I'm Nasus. Yeah, no, if, if Nasus can get past lane phase, get to a late game, he's actually like an excellent late game champion. It's just like, it's like poppy, like. Kind of it's over working, excellent. Yeah. It just be tur it turns silly. Working into that late game with a champion like Poppy or Nasus, it takes quite a bit of work. But that's what they're doing right now. It's it's really relying on something, and I'm surprised more pressure hasn't been put on them. Pop trying to get a few pokes in, takes one for himself in the fight under the tower again. Boy Boy just going harassed as he throws down that shred for Wicked. Tries to keep him in that spirit fire, moving around, getting that Q stacked up. Yeah, no, with that blue buff and that glacial shot, he has almost 40% CR. He can look to dominate the lane just by how low his cooldowns are. He's got innate uh, uh, health regen or sustain just because his passive gives him in pa passive Ooh. life steal, which synergizes off his the extra bonus damage from Q. Oh wow, they're looking to kill him. Ooh, that was, that's like that's such a smart play. I'm surprised Saint didn't fall for that. To be quite honest, I actually think. <laughs> Saint, did Saint that, miss the ward or did he? No, it was really close. That ward got the ward was placed down, and Lux was on the backside, and they're gonna wombo combo the Malphite ultimate, but he walked off out of distance before that could happen. Going right. top though, looks like they could position for the three V, and uh, he will come around. He's gonna clear this ward. No, no, Saint's gonna gonna walk away and return five seconds later just for the gank after these golems. Bottom lane still being pressured. Saint does not have to go bottom anymore, and this is where you think you would see Snoopy. He's really just been trilling top lane when Yellow Pete and Crepo not having yeah. that bad of a lane. Snoopy needs to start helping Wicked down bottom. It's but not a lost lane, and he usually bounces back. But Snoopy's sort of a really low damage jungler. I don't think without like without even red buff, to even to get the kill. Yeah, right. Even, without red buff, I think it'd be really hard to even kill Voy. So right now. They're, they're content. Wicked can just split farm with CS in the lane. Even though Void has blue buff and Glacial, CS why Wicked is winning. Even after the early pressure. So this is, yeah. they're satisfied just leaving Void there. Like, like He's putting a lot of pressure, sure, but he's not necessarily winning in CS. And so Snoopy can just look to camp other lanes. And yeah, and that's, exactly. that's how much they trust Wicked to equalize lanes, even after a loss. So exactly ooh. what he's doing right now. Beautiful job by Cop as he starts falling out of the air. Instantly hits Cleanse. To move himself out of that, like, half what? second he would even be stopped. I, yeah, maybe to clear the wave. He just, he likes snow. Wanted <laughs> to do it. Uh, okay, there, I don't think there was a real much of a reason for that. So Voy comes, goes bottom. Voy knows that Malphite ulti's down. And he can just free farm bottom. He's just standing right in turret range. Almost looked to get a shot there and take one of the shots to himself and really set up Ricket, Wicked for a good dive. He's going to hit Equilibrium Strike, but Boy Boy is just going to be able to throw on his ultimate and really just get through this one easy. There's a few shots that he didn't want to take, but he'll be able to sustain. Yeah, no. Because of Boy's early pressure, they're able to take a free free Dragon without any any problem. <laughs> Wicked can't contest with that low health, nope. low mana. He's CSC fine, but sure. But they get the early Dragon Control, and they're up 2k gold. So they're doing, they're doing pretty well. They're doing pretty well. That was good communication. Prepo, Yellow Pete going back. They said, we have enough. We don't even need to pull our AD down. And they take that three-man dragon. I think the problem area is in the B. Wicked buys his Ionic Spark, and then he picks up a red buff. And as soon as he does that, Vile Mane's lost. Because there's no way... Well, I don't think there's much of a way for him to fight that. But we shall see. Sleep is just holding the lane for Wicked right now. And top lane, fairly equal. I'm, I'm surprised. It equalized fairly, fairly well. Two Dorans does make Cog a little bit tankier, and he's got that blood boil from Nunu on top of the almost same buy the Yellow Pete has right now. He's looking for about 300 more gold to finish that uh, Bloodthirster. Saint back top. No real words for him. Oh, there is one in the bush just below him to the left. Yellow Pete will show that he knows, and he will try to get some damage out here. Giving Saint harassment. Saint now the focus is on Voiboy, Boy, but not Voiboy, Boy, rather Wicked knows he can freeze this lane or choose to push it with that vision of Saint top. He's got a little time to do what he wants here. Froggen, really, like you said, that skill matchup just continuously back and forth. Only a difference of 9 CS right now. Yeah. And, uh, it, it really seems have to see where the team fights come Yeah, there, there won't be any progress in lane unless Jackie hit, gets hit with like, Jackie or Froggy hit with a bunch of random binds and then skill shots. Really nothing they can do. 
Wicked actually going really hard in on Void. He is, especially Voidboy coming back to lane with the frozen hard on. Voidboy chooses to stop though. Gets hit once. Still has most no waiting for his cooldowns to come back up. Spearfire Wither back up now. He's gonna go in for the fight. Wither's down on Wicked. Oh, is he really, really mitigating a lot fight? of that damage? Oh, he that, throws the ignite down. That was a pretty much a wasted ignite. Yeah. And Snoopy comes top with an Oracle, slips to sweep. That'll even deter Snoopy oh. to come bottom. And Void is going to just take blue buff again. So this time Voy is gonna play the role of the AP carry, or, or who always cries for blue buff. So right. Uh, I'm really surprised Jackie's been able to give it up, but Jackie's been able to give that up and not lose CS. So that just shows not only uh, Jackie's skill, but also Orianna's like, ability to wave clear. It's very, very good. Wave clear, play a skill, dodge lane, and just keep yourself out of that. Lux being oh, very good Oh, they're going aggressive top e. lane, and they, they back out. Saint. I was going to say he's down to fourth health, trying to initiate that fight with his team. So red buff is up. I'm, I would really like a really to take this. Literally just run to it, take it, and then go to the lane. Because I'm pretty sure Red Buff Wicked can beat down a Frozen Cart Blue Buff uh, Dog. Or N <laughs> Nasus. Go, dog. So here he is actually putting the pressure on. Look at that. Free damage. Wicked knows. He's got to see the damage trade there. However, that Q right now on a 2.4 second cooldown. So those auto attacks from Wicked better be substantial if he wants to get past Boy Boy. And you can just see the potions on top of his sustain now at full health. Wicked can't even swing to get his sustain in. And he is actually hitting him up here. So he cannot farm as well. Really all the harassment onto Wicked right now. And his Mundo, or like you said, Malphite can't even help that much. He is trying to come down. He will try to give him some help. But that early ward from uh, Boy Boy is going to give him that tell. Oh, and Void knows he's here. Yep. Wicked wants to go in on this, but w Wicked gets slowed. So Felipe just clears the warden. It's a great job there. It's almost a great counter Wicked should too. definitely shove this and go to red. On the, he's making the smart play right here. All right, so he should is be he going to, to red buff right now. Yep. yep, there's no reason for Snoopy to ever get this, especially with, with Wicked on the bottom lane and with Wicked needing help. Wicked, reminder, Wicked's still ahead in terms of CS. Snoopy has this himself every time he sees it, so it's way better on Wicked. He's going to be in the fight auto-attacking a lot more. We'll see. We'll really see how this turn the tide, or turns the tide of this bottom lane fight. Top lane really hasn't been too much of a factor for these teams. Zero and zero across the board for both AD carries and supports. Ooh. Saints coming in bottom. It's hard. It's going to be hard for... He could. Oh, no, he's not. I was yeah. going to say both were going to go one river, one lane gank. But it looks like they actually Saint will go for the lane gank here. I'm All curious right. if Boots Void is going to pick up here. Probably Merc Treads, but maybe even Tabby to deal with Aurelia's uh, auto attack dam damage. And Saint bottom. Hitting the bush. This is a smart. So very Wicked, smart. Wicked thinks he can push. That Void Boy went back, but Void Boy's like, nope, I'm still here. He's not really showing Mundo though. And Silji, you finally take yep. the, down the top turret. They can just swap here, to be honest. If if, if Nace is an issue or Nas is an issue bottom, then they can just look to swap. There it is. Ooh. Wicked goes to face check the bush. There might be enough crowd control to lock him down. Oh, there is the dead. exhaust, and he is definitely going down on this one. The Q and Boy Boy picks up the second kill of the match on Nasus, the least person you have fed. You know, Saints been doing a great job impacting bot lane here. Even even the fact that Boy Boy really winning the lane, they're still creating opportunities for for lane ganks all the time. Yep. But that's what happens when you get an early Oracle on it. Such a tanky champion like like Mundo. Really, the only character that can go that can uh, stop him is it has to be a jungler plus the middle lane killing him off of, off a of ward bait, and that's what they tried and weren't able to succeed because it, it's just it didn't, just didn't happen. You can see the switch up in composition for the teams now. Uh, Saints are able to go for a little bit more of a less tanky build, more innate to just going into the fight and helping when Nasus now taking over the tanky. Curious if Snoop is going to go in on this. Nope. He decides not to. Wasn't really worth it. We can easily flash a max range Malphite ulti. And still, the game definitely curses favor right now. 3k gold advantage. Uh, I'm not going to call C it CLGU out right now, but... There hasn't been any team fights. Right, but Voy is very, very big, and he just straight by the Shirelias off his gold pretend. The scoreboard looks very barren right now. It's only 2-0-0 yeah, zero and zero for, for Voy Boy. 
avoid CLG. just ulted. And yeah, they're yep. gonna have to back out here. They actually void and Saint Vicious ulted, so there is two big ulties or that are gonna contribute be, to this fight. Ulted that. On a, a, a yellow P, he he easily had the uh, the ulti there. A lot there. of wards going over here. Looks like they're able to grab Dragon, so they force this fight, and that was great. Really great for both teams. They've actually pulled Nunu and Kogma off the top lane, so nobody was even free farming yeah. on that. Had already ulted, and then uh, they had a Shirelius. They could have initiated that. I'm kind of surprised they backed off after how really huge Nasus is. Like, he's good got I think it was a good amount of miscommunication, and the both ulties being half over or almost down would have They can dive middle. Oh, and this oh is what a flash out of the Malphite ulti! Beautiful job by Nijacky. Uh, yep, really good flash. And really good, really good idea by Snoopy. Snoopy saw Nasus bottom, knew that best did before people mid, and immediately went in. Looks like Boy Boy is gonna do everything he can to push this down. He is having fun bottom, leveling that Q up. Two hundred ninety-one plus physical damage right now. It's gonna be hitting for about five hundred damage a Q, depending on who he's hitting. Wicked's gonna clear this up nice and easy. That next spark able to push this lane back out. The top lane is down, so this is some scary farming here without ward coverage or your supports. What what are the lanes to do now besides with that dragon down, you're gonna clear the jungle. Is it just look for that team fight and push mid? Yeah, pretty much. Lux creates opportunities to get picks. And so it's really up to Froggen to be able to to look for the pick opportunities. While it's up for a curse to be able to initiate in but they're, they're like they have no part initiation, so they're looking to get Dove on, and CLGU is looking for that 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 single target pick because they don't want to dive with a full five unless it's it's unless they're really far ahead. That's true. Curse's that's... late game initiation really relies on Shockwave. Yeah, like, that's about it. You're gonna see people running into the fight, completely telegraphing the aggression from the opposing team. So they have to be careful. Could get quite, quite sticky for them as they come into this late game phase. Middle still being held. Froggen doing a very good job there. 274 to 248 as he finally broke away from Nijacky in the CS uh, in the farming region. And as they clean up their jungle, they'll look to push this mid. It keeps resetting with both Oriana and Lux, or Froggen rather, being there. Boy and Boy getting very big. Yep, Boy's just straight farming. He's still not above CS of Wicked though. Like Wicked's fine. He's still in the right. game. It just, it just, all that help has just been able to get Boy to to a late game, and that's really what they needed because because that Wither debuff is such a huge move speed attack speed attack speed slow. We got if you ever get that on the AD carry, he literally will hit you once. And it synergizes amazing every two Frozen seconds. Heart. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, that's even something you can multitask onto somebody else and say, you know, this person is also a threat. Let's wither Aurelia and just stand next to, you know, uh, Ezreal. See how they decide to play it. They'll probably just crush down on one person. It's going to be quite quick. A lot of power can come out of this team. You're going to have Kog'Ma just tearing somebody apart after that shockwave yep. with Blood Boil on. Cursed with pushing two lanes right now. Uh, CLGU kind of wandering around looking for a pick with Lux, but I don't know if they'll get it with the kind of positioning that Curse is, is in right now. And so they're going to have to send someone top right now. Mo more than likely going to be the AD carry, so Yellow Pete's already heading out over there. And M Mundo just comes, rotates back mid. He's going to look to buy a Warmogs again. Yep, he is actually farming that up. He has fo oh, 540. He's not really that close to it. He's just going back to get more sustained. Knows he's pushed the lane. Froggen's still in mid, just continuously lasering this down, trying to get all the CS that he can. 293, the highest in the game. He sits on 9,000 gold right now, and the closest behind him is actually Nijacky at 8,200. Froggen doing a great job farming. He just picked up his Void Staff, finished off both uh, his Death Cap and Void Staff now. He can pretty much one-shot anyone, any squishy target without any MR. So... Kog'Maw or Orianna, I think, can both die here. As long as Ori doesn't, E doesn't get hit, doesn't, or doesn't apply. Both teams doing the same exact thing, just roaming around, like you said, trying to pick someone off at different times, but every time they're always dispersed and in a different direction. So right now, Saint just returns to sweeping with his Oracle. Snoopy, he also has one. That's a still. Saint has not gone down, gone down and neither has Snoopy, so these Oracles have been standing. Really getting that return on investment. 
Jackson top in mid. Such a slow middle part of the game. Nobody wants to do anything after that dragon fight. No, absolutely not. And this is like CLGU, like what they're good at doing. <laughs> it's just that a lot of teams haven't been able to force them into, into a situation where they're forced to play and turtle it out. The, the problem is the fact that they're actually forced to do this means that Curse, Curse has been putting in enough pressure uh, here to... Uh, to force them to play their real playstyle, which is very surprising. Uh, I think a lot of people expect Curse to be to come into this showing with a pretty bad showing, but they've been impressing so far, especially with an unorthodox picks or an un unorthodox pick. Sorry. This is somewhat scaring me for Curse, though. Really, I feel like both of these teams, you know, CLG has the Malphite initiation. They have the dive buddy comp with Aurelia. But I feel like there is no, certainly no initiation from Curse. Nobody's going to walk into that command shockwave. It's going to have to be a catch. It's going to have to be off a dragon or a blue buff take. Nobody's going to find someone in the lane right now. And these guys are just going to be farm festing all over the place. No, no, that's really it. They're going to look for the superior late game with Nunu Cog, and that's all they're looking for. Dragon almost hitting that Q. Had that Q hit, uh, Cop may have died. And right off, right there. So there. A little movement onto the blue buff. They get a ward down. They don't have any vision on that area, just towards that mid. So Snoopy is going to take that out, and they don't know which position he Ooh, is going to move Aurelia. to. Aurelia may have been seen on that top side. Saint has eyes that should be on Lux's. Wicked. Yep. Stolen away every time Froggen plays mid. He's always getting the blue, the pressure from his team, helping oh, to he, take that one out. Going, they're eh? trying to reinitiate Wicked, taking a, a bit of burst damage here. He's down to half. half. He forces the flash. True shot does pass quite nicely through the team. It looks like they're both taking a second thought at this. Okay, so Lux misses her abilities. I'm curious if Sing will, will go in, regardless of the fact that his ulti is now down. So we have uh, Lux ulti will be coming up again. So every time Lux fishes for a bind, so, you have to be really, really careful. So many zoning properties of each team. You can see the ball as well as uh, that Lucent Singularity the thing being is, able to Snoopy zone out. really needs to uh, clear out that ward so they don't have sight. But he doesn't know that it's there. If they can get to it, he may have seen it off. Wicked's just shoving middle. I, I think see, if ZOGU literally collapsed middle right now, they can get that tower and maybe look to pressure the next tower, forcing four people to come in, as well as avoid the teleport in. Boy Boy has taken that bottom turret. He may have the chance to teleport in just a few seconds. They're going to be able to grab this mid turret as well. But Boy Boy stays nope. on the run for right now. It does not look one, like he's backing. One person has to back for Void then. Yep, Froggen is going to be the one to do that. Oh, Froggen, gets Froggen gets hot. Oh, he did. Froggen trying to flash over the wall. He is right by Wraith. Saint will land another one. A great binding, but he is just going to break through that with the Merc Treads. And it looks like they may be able to put on a good amount of pain here. Beautiful Absolute Zero in the exhaust before he shifts away. Yellow Pete finds himself going down. Snoopy in a tight spot. But look what Void Boy is doing inside the base. He almost has an inhibitor to himself. A huge moves here for Curse. Right, no, that was a really bad time to get caught by Froggen. He, he went back in, in a really bad place. That's all it is. And there it is, trying to initiate the super slow on both of them, but the Wither lasting a little bit longer than the Equilibrium Strike. And here comes the uncontested Baron. Ooh, and that just caused... That gave Curse the game right there. We will see. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Both of these teams definitely taking their time. The crowd applauding Curse for very just plays all around the map. We're gonna get a quick replay of all that action. All right, you see Frog get hit with the initial clear. He's forced to flash. He gets exhausted, but unfortunately the Orion speedboat is next too fast. And they try to burn through Mundo. They don't get it. And unfortunately, once you get caught like that, your whole team, anyone who helps you, gets caught as well. You see Saint picking up a nice dragon off of that, completely increasing their lead. And with all that happening, you're, wow, that was a lot of action. It's really only a 5,000 gold lead at 4-0. to zero, But Chris is maintaining perfect control over this game right now. Lanes haven't been really too much won or lost. We do see the uh, Wicked has that 253 CS Ooh. over Nasus, but he has the two kills. Both of these teams are really beefy coming into these fights, and it's, it's really all up to skill for these fights right now. Not for CLGU at this point. They have to wait on the Baron, so they're gonna let these towers go down. All right, exactly. And you see a bunch of players from uh, Curse picking up some MR. You see Boy pick, pick up the MR. The Spear Massage already finished by Mundo as a first item. So they know that he he is like a threat. He's definitely a threat to the point where they have to buy MR, or else his damage will be very, very high. 
as long as Cop doesn't have MR yet, Cop could still get one shot by Lux, which means they still have a good shot at winning this game. That NASA's pick. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Boy, boy, really, really clean. Really it up. making me eat my words right now. I, I, I think that I, I don't know. They, they, they did. They. They synergized it really well, it gave him a lot of opportunities to get past the early game, his weakest portion, and able to transition into a late game. And one mistake by Froggen cost, cost them this game. Even in a situation like that, I, I feel that, you know, as Kogma was at maybe like the, the European regionals where people continued to play him a little bit because nobody really had played him in a while and knows how to play against him, that's the same thing with Nasus. When you, you, you know, Voiboy plays Aurelia as well, and it was almost like the Malphite uh, Aurelia matchup for Wicked previously that he was really just able to take down. It's like he knew the timings of Aurelia, and he really played that lane well. Like we even said, with, with little help from Saint, they were still able to keep that lane down. Right. But even it, even if it's an awkward pick, and it mm -hmm. puts a surprise on your enemies, it's still a pick that not that's not picked for a reason. Mainly right, because right. it has very key weaknesses, such as very bad laning phase, for instance, <laughs> that caused it to be uh, unpopular. Or mm -hmm. that that really really slow ramp up time. Mm -hmm. We see the pressure trying to be thwarted here by CLG EU. They've been pushed back into their base, very familiar position for them to come out of as well. It looks like they're just gonna go all in on this turret, face tank it out, pushing down into the inhibitor turret. So all second tier turrets are now down. The bottom lane taken out by uh, Voiboy himself, really giving Curse an advantage on map positioning. The Baron is still ticking. They have not let that go to waste and they're just doing everything they need to to advance themselves to this win right now. Right, kind of just waiting for uh, Cop to finish off his next item. And we finally get an Aegis pickup. Took uh, 32 minutes, but typically when Saint build, builds Mundo, he doesn't like to be like that that team player Mundo. He likes to build the Warmogs, which is actually very, very strong in him because you can't get enough farming and jungle to build both Warmogs as well as Aegis. So he has to make a decision, and this time he decided to build uh, the Warmogs as well as get a Sunfire here. He really wants to put himself in the fight. I think that Randuin's is coming up quickly next. It'll really help to shut down even more with Wither and Frozen Heart. They'll just be able to rock the AD carries. Yellow P really won't be able to get anywhere. And they have so much catch and, and just stickiness on this curse team that they can just catch at least one person, even if they're getting kited. And this is a really strange buy by by Jackie. He's looking to go Rylize here. And I've heard I've heard people tell me how Rylize is a, is good on uh, Oriana, but I've never actually seen it in a competitive game. Like it's it, so therefore I kind of like thought it wasn't that great. But I may be wrong. I just like to see how it works out for Ori here. I can, I can, I definitely see where that is. I feel like there may be a little bit of money wasted on that. She does need a little bit of sustain, but they have so much of what that Rylas is going to provide for their team. They have the damage. They have the slow. Yeah, it's going to help. It's, it's going to help great. But you could have put that into a, a Void Staff with more damage. Yeah, I just feel like a Void Staff would have been a better item. But maybe he just wants to be a little bit tankier to survive right. this new initiation, yeah. which definitely would, would make sense. That's true. He's going to be putting that ball on cop, trying to protect somebody else. So he's not going to have his defense for himself. Pushed back into their base. That inhibitor has spawned. This is really that free area for Curse to be playing around in. Wicked trying to put some pressure on St. Vicious. Not forcing the ulti. But St. Vicious hitting back as well. And this is the issue with, with Wicked's build. So he's got this build that doesn't build any defensive items. And he really can't go into a, an area and expect to come out alive because he's so squishy. As a bruiser, if you're a melee and you're squishy, oh, it's such a bad... It's, such, it's, it's really, really bad to play that into any kind of uh, coordinated team. Because they'll all just focus you and you'll die. The Yellow P taking half its health Ooh. in poke. And look at that slow. It lasts so long. And it goes to like a ridiculously high percentage. Wow, Kogma, Kog just right. Oh, going through. It's going to be an ulti from Malphite. The laser pretty much missing along with True Shot Barrage. And that's so much damage that could have been had. They go simply for the inhibitor here. And a great engagement. They just take that and run with it. I think they could have killed Yellow Pete there. Yellow Pete had three seconds. Uh, well, actually, no, he had flash. No, the best they could have done was for flash. Never mind. It was smarter than just taking him. So Curse goes back to completely controlling the entire jungle. At least three wards cover that right side of the blue jungle. And they don't have uh, four wards 
They really have no vision, especially that lane ward as well, to let them know if they're coming out of the base and what moves they can make to get a different angle on this fight. They know they have CLG EU on their heels. They just need to make this next fight count. Baron is going to be up in one minute, Skara. So that's going to be huge for this matchup. Wherever, whichever way that goes, I think there's, you know, that middle lane is quite close. That's the, the last tier for the inhibitor. And then the Nexus, it's it's 17, yeah, level 18. These are going to be some long respawn times. The issue right now is, is Nexus is too strong. No one can 1v1 them, so they need to send two to, to stop a split, split push. And there's teleport on Voy, so he's, it's going to be an issue where as soon as Baron comes up, Voy's just going to go split push bottom and then teleport up. And either two comes to kill him, and he may be 1v2s, right. or they get a free Baron. And either way, they come out on top. Definitely have to point out how far Snoopy has fallen behind this game. He is 50, almost now 60 CS behind St. Vicious, level 17 to 14. He's three levels behind St. Vicious right now. Really not able to be that, that beef for his team when he gets into the fight. We'll have to see what, what, how that contributes. He does have the Oracle. He still hasn't died, but he hasn't been making too much con contribution right. to the lanes three either. Three people are going bottom right now. So Voy may be able to go back, oh, may, wow. may not. This looks like straight old CLG here. It's like hot shot down bottom on Cho'Gath. Nobody's going to kill him, and they're going to give up this uh, Baron. Looks but like Malphite and Lux to going to Baron. They oh, aren't able to take him out. He is running here. He will be able to throw down the Wither once more. They have grabbed Baron. They're now making their way down to the base. They have Nasus in there. Voy Boy is going to go down. So he's going to have to be very careful. It's only going to be a 4v5. They have Snoopy on the run. Him being down levels. He's taking so much damage. They've now evened up the score. 4v4, but the Baron buff. They are trying to take down elements. The Protect goes on from Orianna. The Dissonance damage just missing. It could have really activated that initiation for them. Then that better Catalyst back in down to St. Vicious. Oh my gosh! So much damage coming from Cop in that Infinity Edge onto Kogma. And they're just going to take down this turret. Cop waiting for that next minion wave, waiting for that W to come back up. He's going to stay within safe range and drop that if St. Vicious doesn't get there in time. He doesn't even wait for the minion wave. He takes the ball, gets that Bio Arcane Barrage range, and takes out the turret. Right, and now they have another free in hip. And all they have to do is go back after this, slow roll the mid tower, and they win the game. Very, very smart play by Curse this game. Very, very smart play. That's, that was, at, at, at what point, you know, Voidboy is going to stay in your base, but he's quite low. Would it even, it, I guess it wouldn't even been a choice for somebody to run up there. It was just too long. No, yeah. They, uh, the problem with Q, uh, Nasus Q affecting buildings means that he can chunk 500 health in one Q. So they have to send one to stop him. Because if they force a 4v5 fight, he can, he can get the Nexus before you even kill people. Saint throwing on the ultimate looks to make it out. Oh, he gets stuck with an elusive singularity and the bind. Beautiful job to slow St. Vicious. They do have the Ignite on. They will finish the kill. And slowly, slowly creeping back, CLG EU grabs onto the first rung of this ladder. And Wicked. here, Wicked's just gonna slow, <laughs> and yeah, he can't do anything. A little bit of weather. Super slow-mo chase. Yeah, yeah, so Wicked sells his Zerker boots for Mercs because he realizes that Wither is a high priority threat. And that's something that he should have opened with because that would have been a lot better. It really kept him down in lane. He wasn't even able to trade with damage. Voy Boy just stayed pretty much under his tower the whole game. Wicked, how you, how you said, was able to farm that Blade Surge under the turret pretty effective. But into this late game, Nasus is huge, especially that Force of Nature helping the regen on his HP as he just runs around and kites you throughout the fight. Dragon, Baron, last two of each going to curse as they completely control this game and have a 9-8,000 gold lead onto CLG EU. Could be a final push scar they're looking to take down this middle inhibitor their lanes are pushed actually to second tier right now so this is perfect timing everybody's gonna have to focus middle right and they should just send nasus bottom or actually yes no yeah I think that they can send them in the side lane and force uh a lot of pressure or they can just force the, the 5v5 because it, the what the middle tower is down then yeah they can just run straight through they're so tanky that it will be extremely hard to be able to kill 
not only Saint, but Saint and Void. Yep, they that, only have one minute and 30 seconds that, left on this Baron. One of the issues with Lux is that she's a very bursty champion, but she's got very long cooldowns. We turn consistent DPS, isn't that good? With ultimate coming in from Snoopy. True Shot Barrage hitting the entire team. They could turn this one around for themselves, but Wicked is left all alone. They weren't ready for the engagement. They're dealing with Saint Vicious right now. Snoopy forced out of the fight as well, and Curse turns this one and turns CLG on their heads for this fight coming around with Baron. They're able to just take down the last inhibitor. The bottom one has spawned. They have the Nexus in their sights. Nope. They're going to drop this inhibitor and finish off yeah, the match. That's GG. Real good play by Curse. Very, very surprisingly won with, with Nexus. Very, very surprising. So Skara forced to eat a hat. Curse coming up with game one. We're one to one now in a series of five. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>